I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on spectroscopy. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm Professor of Organic Chemistry here at Romano Scientific, and I'm the creator and the author of the Dr. Stroyer book and the Orgo Man products. I want to go over a really good question that you'll see in the DAT involving NMR spectroscopy and how you go about solving such a question with relative ease. So come around and let's have a look. I give you a C4 H8O2 compound, and I say to you that the NMR data reveals a triplet, a singlet, and a quartet. Now, the first thing that you should focus on is the largest number. The largest number is the most downfield signal. Now, this should really help you eliminate almost every choice right in itself. So if we went to this first of all, you would see that this carbon has three H's. And those H's, you jump to your next door carbon and you see that there's two hydrogens and therefore you use the N plus one rule and you would see that these H's would give a triplet. This CH2, you jumped to the carbon to the right of you. There's nothing, no H's. Here there's three H's, you add one, that would be a quartet, and this would be a singlet. So I hope you can see that the singlet would be the most downfield signal because these H's are on a carbon that's adjacent to all these negative groups or negative atoms. So I would expect this to have the most downfield signal as a singlet. And as you can see, the most downfield signal would be a quartet. Besides, I also want you to remember something that an OCH3 group comes in around three on the delta scale. So if it was an O and then there's a carbonyl attached, then that would bring this a little further downfield. So that means I would expect a singlet downfield at around 3.3. And that's surely not seen. All right, let's skip B and let's go to C. If you look at C, this hydrogen and this hydrogen are different. Hopefully you can see that. So you would have hydrogen A, B, C, and if you look closely, you would see that these would be the same. This is adjacent to an H, and if you just bend it a little bit, you would see that. But this, so you would get a singlet from these, but this and this, this H would be split by this into a doublet. And this H would be split by this into a doublet. So I would expect a doublet, a doublet, and then these, of course, would be the singlets. But I don't need to go on any further simply because there's no doublet. That's eliminated. I'm going to quickly eliminate D. If you look at the CH3, those H's, you jump to your next door carbon, would give a doublet. This would give a doublet. And this one, well, if you look here, this is the carbon it's bonded to. If you jump to the adjacent, that would be three plus one, would be a quartet. And if you jump here, a doublet. So that would be a quartet of doublets, or you would just see it as one big ugly multiplet, and that's not seen. So I've eliminated that. So I've got all these eliminated, but let's look at choice B. In choice B, the most downfield signal would be this signal from here. This would be the quartet, this would be the triplet, and this would be the singlet. Now, where would this quartet come in around? Well, we know a CH3O comes in around three. So if it was a CH2 with an O, maybe a little bit more, like 3.2, 3.3, and you can see there's another electronegative group that's a carbonyl. So I would expect this quartet to come in very close to four. And as you can see, the quartet comes in around four, 4.00 exactly here, and it would be the most downfield signal. So choice B would be the correct answer. If you can apply this, you should be able to have all the questions in the destroyer with ease. And on the, on the DAT exam, it'll be a piece of cake. I hope this helped and gave you some good direction on when you approach an NMR. Always try to look at the wrong answers and just try to eliminate them as you go along.
Okay, good day to you. Bye-bye.